Okay, just a quick lesson with radicals, because I know many of you haven't worked much with square roots. I mean, I know you all know how to square the square root of 3. So, for instance, if I just give you this, I think all of you realize that squaring undoes a square root, and that just gives you 3. I just want to make sure you're comfortable when the expressions are a little more complicated than that. So if I had like 8 root 2 and I was squaring that, if you remember right from our rules of exponents, uh, basically that means the same thing as 8 squared times root 2 squared because we're using the rule a, b to a power is equal to a to that power, b to that power. So essentially, we're going to square the back down here, um, this expression right here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to square the 8, and we're going to square the root 2. So that ends up being 64 times 2, which ends up equaling 128. So don't let the presence of a coefficient in front of the square root uh, bother you if you're squaring it because you're using the Pythagorean theorem or because you're doing a trig ratio, that's just fine. So I want you to know how to square expressions that have radicals in them, and I also want you to know how to handle when you multiply them or divide them. So I'm going to go to another slide. And let's say that I wanted to multiply So we're going to learn how to multiply square roots together. There's really not much to it. If I have like the square root of 7 times the square root of 11, basically the rule that I'm going to use is this right here, that the square root of some quantity times the square root of another quantity is just the square root of those two quantities multiplied together. So for instance back here root 7 times root 11 is root 77 because I basically multiply the 11 by the 7. Um, so that may come up at times during your simplification and that's fine that you go ahead and do that. It certainly makes it look more tidy. Um, the reason for that really is because of the fact that a radical is really just a fractional exponent. It's raising things to the one-half. And that means all of our rules of exponents that we were more comfortable with are also true about radicals. So if anybody's interested in exploring the, the quick basis for these particular rules, I'm happy to cover that for you. Uh, just ask me outside of class. Uh, so that's multiplying square roots together. You may notice that the rules that we have here, right here, actually look like a rule you've probably seen before. Uh, but usually you're used to seeing the rule written this way, where we have a square root of a product and then we take it upon ourselves to write the square root of each of the two multipliers individually. Um, likewise, dividing square roots, if I had something like root 8 over root 4, I'm going to use a rule that basically, again, comes out of the way exponents behave. Uh, if I have the square root of a fraction, Basically, I can take the square root of the top over the square root of the bottom. Most of us get used to doing this rule going in that direction, but it is going to be in this direction that we're going to use the rule more often than not here. In other words, this stuff right here, the root A over root B, is often going to be the way the numbers are presented to us or or the way our expression that we set up might look. And we're going to use the rule uh, going this way. Uh, I'm going to switch back to my pen. This is a new app for me, so I'm a little bit 
uh, getting used to it right now. So basically what this is saying is I can take these two square roots and I can reunite them into this, put them back one over the other, and then that works out well because I happen to know what the, that gives me root 2, and that might be considered a bit more tidy than the original expression. Now you may have noticed that when I was doing this that root 4 was actually a number I could have written as a 2. That was kind of an accident on my part. Uh, I could easily have put anything else there and that would still be the way it would behave. But obviously it's going to work even if there's another way to evaluate the, the root 4. Um, just to give you uh, another root Sorry about that. If I had um, root, oh, say, 27, of which I do not know the square root, over the root of 3, which I do not know the square root of 3. It's not a tidy little integer. Using this rule, I would write this as 27 thirds. And then that's really the square root of a... 9, and that is something we do know the value of, so it can really make your expressions get tidier in this case. If for some reason that 9 had not been a square root, a perfect square, I would have just left it as the radical. So for instance, if I had uh, something like root 28 over root over over root uh, actually let me change that because that's going to be reducible another way if I if I had something like uh, oh let's say 30 38 over 19 I basically could say that that's the same thing as root 2 something I don't know the square root of it, so I would just leave it like this. So hopefully now there's no expression that you have that would give you any problem. Let's apply it to one of the problems similar to the ones that I'm having you do for homework. Okay, so I've grabbed the problem from the textbook. I've grabbed problem 18. I stole one of the even problems so that um, you could follow along and not use up your stock of odd problems for which you have the answers. Uh, so if I'm going to start this right here, I know that this is my 30, 60, 90 triangle. And um, I'm sorry, my degree symbols are a little wimpy with this stylus. So basically, if I wanted to get a side right away, let's say I wanted to get side v. I can write an expression that deals with v and the number I have and I can use either one of these angles but I ought to decide which angle I'm going to focus on because that would determine which side would be an opposite and which would be an adjacent. I'm going to use the 30 side so I'm going to go ahead and say the I say if, if I use the 30 degree angle, the 8 is my opposite side and V is my adjacent side. So that I could say the tangent of 30 degrees is equal to 8 over V. Uh, that's one way to set it up. There are other ways to set it up because I could use the 8 and the U first or I could have focused everything from the 60 degree angle. Um, I'm not too fond of the, the, the number tangent 30, but certainly it'll give me some practice with my radicals. If you remember right, that was one of the values on the unit circle that we found, and it ended up being 1 over root 3, which sometimes is written as root 3 over 3. So I am able to to actually find this value by remember going y over x using the coordinates that are at 30 
pause this for a second if you need to regroup this. So 1 over root 3 is a tangent of 30 degrees. And I put that in place of tan 30 because that is the ratio. Um, and then I just cross multiply. 1 times v equals 8 root 3. And as you can see, this came down to an answer pretty quickly. So v is equal to 8 root 3. Oh, that was a bad writing thing. Okay, now as far as finding u, I might as well go ahead and find u using another trig function. Or I could, technically, I could use Pythagorean theorem. Either way. Um, I think the easiest way to do it might be just going to another trig value. So I can now say that the, I know that for 30 degrees, the, the opposite side is E8 and the hypotenuse is U. So I can say the sine of 30 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is 8, over the hypotenuse, which I don't know and is labeled with a U. And now again, I can cross multiply. If you remember right, the sine of 30 is actually a number I know. So sine of 30 is the y coordinate right at that first location. So if you remember right, that number was 1 half. So I can just replace sine 30 with 1 half. And now you can see that u is not going to be hard to get once I cross multiply. 1 times u is equal to 2 times 8. And there's my value of u. So because we can put in exact values from our unit circle uh, experience and knowing the coordinates along those special angles, I can now get exact values. Sometimes those answers will have a radical in them. Sometimes the answer will not have a radical in them. But now at least you're equipped for handling them either way. Hope this was helpful.